Hi, my name is James, and I'm a librarian at the University of Alabama. Today we're going to be working through the basics of using Communication Source, one of the primary communication subject databases at UA. We're starting here at the library homepage, which is lib.ua.edu, and we'll be clicking on Databases. You can find Communication Source by searching for it, or you can browse by subject, Communication. Just as a reminder, if you're off campus, you'll be prompted to log in with your MyBama login when you click the database link. Logging in with your MyBama login is the only way to access the full text of articles in the database, so be sure to do so. You can also log into MyBama before going to the library homepage, and this will do the same thing. You might wonder what differentiates Communication Source from a broader database like Scout. Search results in Communication Source are drawn from a list of journals that specifically publish about communication, mass comm, rhetoric, linguistics, and other communication-related topics. Thus, any search you run in this database should give you results that are directly relevant to your research and communication. You can see a full list of these journals by clicking on Publications at the top of the screen. After you click on Communication Source, you'll end up here on the Advanced Search page. This page allows you to search multiple keywords simultaneously using Boolean operators. Boolean searching is outside the scope of this tutorial, but I'll include a link to that tutorial in the video description. In addition to basic keyword searching, you can click the drop down by the search box to search by author, title, subject, and many other things. For demonstration purposes, though, I'm going to run a basic search for politeness theory. Once the search runs, you'll see the search results listed below. Each entry here is a different article from your results, and you can see the title of the article, author, what it was published in, publication date, some subjects, which give you an idea about the article content, and options for accessing the article below that. To see more information about a particular article, click on the title. This page is the database entry for this particular article. It has a lot of the same information as the search result, but it also includes the abstract, a short description of the article's contents, as well as a number of tools that let you save the article and cite it. If I wanted to access the full text of the article from this page, I would click the appropriate icon on the left side of the page. Looking back at the search results, I can see that there are a lot of articles to go through here. There are a few ways to reduce that number. First, I can use the limiters here on the left. For the research you're doing in this class, you'll definitely want to limit the results to peer-reviewed articles and to academic journals. Doing this will remove a few results. You can also limit the date range for the results. If we scroll down and change the first date to 2010, this will also reduce the number of results we have and ensure that we're getting more recent research. You don't have to do this, but it can be helpful. As for saving your results, there are a lot of different options. From the search results page, if you wanted to come back to these specific results, you can click on Share and save the permalink in a text document, Google Doc, or email to yourself. You can save multiple individual articles from your search results by clicking the blue folder icons, which saves them in the search folder at the top of the screen. Then, in that search folder, you can select them all and email them to yourself. These do not stay in the folder permanently, however. I would email them to yourself directly after selecting them. You can also email individual articles to yourself from an article page. Imagine for a moment that we found only a few results from our search. There is a way to search in multiple databases simultaneously from this page. Above the search boxes, click Choose Databases and select the ones you think are relevant. The best bets here are, in addition to Communication Source, Academic Search Premier, Business Source Ultimate, and APA Psych Articles. Then scroll down and click OK. Run your search again, and you can see that we have more results in our search. Let's talk briefly about evaluating sources. Since you're conducting research at the graduate level, you'll want to give some thought to the journal a particular article is published in when choosing your sources. Your professor has developed a list of suggested publications, which I've included in your LibGuide so checking a publication against that list is a good place to start. But perhaps there's an article from a publication that's not on that list that you really want to use. As an example, our first result here was published in MIS Quarterly. I'm not familiar with that publication, 
So when deciding whether or not I would want to use that article, I can just Google MIS Quarterly and figure out more about the journal. I can browse through the journal homepage to make a decision about whether or not to use it. Under the header, Editorial Information, there's a link to About MIS Quarterly. Most journals will have a page like this where they describe their scope, that is, what they publish about. This publication publishes primarily on information technology services, research, and other things related to IT. So, would I want to use an article from this publication? For most research about communication, probably not. But if I were writing about communication within information technology, it could be a good source. Use your best judgment when selecting articles. And you can always ask me or your professor for an additional opinion. If you have any trouble with your research, please reach out to me. I'm here to assist you. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, contact us or visit ask.lib.ua.edu to ask a librarian.